What are you so upset about? Stop mooing, okay? Everybody's got problems right now, okay? Our whole species is fucked up. Our whole species is the reason you exist, okay? This is just a disaster. I don't know what we're doing, okay? I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be dismissive. Look, he just, now he, where'd he go? He was just mooing so furiously and loudly, you know? Like, he's the only one that's got issues out here, okay? I don't even mean to come out here today. I got shit to do. Then I got the dope that someone, you know, someone told me that there's a bunch of stuff going off, so I need to get my ass down here. And my, you know, my ADD with this shit, my obsessive compulsive disorder, my OCD, all my neurological deficiencies wouldn't let me leave town yet. So I got to go check on some shit blooming. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Crime Page with Botany Does It. I just come to you from West Texas, okay? We're on, uh, we're kind of like, we're on limestone soil now, but it's going to transition to volcanic as it tends to do in Southwest Texas. And uh, I'm going to show you some interesting plants, hopefully, okay? Aside from uh, screaming at cows like a moron, uh, you know, in the middle of uh, nowhere. Okay, no one can hear me. Maybe there's somebody out there that can hear me. All right, isn't that a nice thought? Don't you want to think that someone out there is listening to you? Probably not, but maybe. Anyway, uh, you can see the soil right here is uh, rather salty. Okay, rather barren, rather salty. Okay, we got a lot of good stuff going off. All right, a lot of good stuff. Let's see what we got. Okay, we'll start with this guy. I just ripped them out of the ground because I'm going to session this at the herbarium. This is a pretty interesting species species peganum mexicanum there's the flower not many of them are in flower anymore uh, you can see many stamens surrounding that central three carpeled ovary which will later mature into this fruit right there okay and then split open there's a bunch of little seeds and seeds inside looking like kidneys okay m m a o i inhibitors all right for you psychedelic weirdos you psychonauts and what the shit this plant's got some uh, potent secondary chemistry uh, there's another species that's invasive that's got bigger white flowers and it's kind of a shrub, uh, also in a genus Peganum, okay? Somewhat odd family. You don't get many members of this family out here in, uh, in North America, okay? The invasive species, I believe, is from India, but you can see it's thriving, semi-succulent, got a big taproot, thriving on this salty soil. I'm going to go press this and uh, hopefully it'll be, uh, you know, uh, you know, a session in the herbarium for the next 100, 200 years, you know, long after we all die. Here's a great native weed, Verbicina encelioides, all right? Genus is Verbicina and encelioides because it looks like an encelia. Look at all those tiny individual flowers forming that flower head, that capitulum, okay? This is a great plant. Got to flip it over. You need to look at those phyleries to diagnose what species you're looking at, okay? Since all DYCs just look like DYCs, damn yellow composites. There's those phyleries. Uh, here's the seeds when they're done, looking like little flaky sunflower seeds. Take these off, put them in your pocket. This is a great species. If you got a bear patch, you don't know what to the plant there, you're lazy, throw these in there, cover them with a little bit of soil, less than, you know, less than a centimeter, and they come up gangbusters. Great for the pollinators. There are a couple species of butterflies, their host plant, okay? Always much better than a lawn, all right? This is like a minimal effort plant, okay? And they can be, uh, some, some people say these are invasive in California, but it's, it's, that's not really true. A, a, a species that's native to the same continent can't really be invasive. I'm sure there's exceptions to it, especially if you're talking about animals, but because these things have had that uh, land connection so long, you know, generally anything that could cause disastrous extinctions and biodiversity loss, uh, you know, would have happened sometime in deep time. The big invasives come from across oceans or ac across the equator. And of course, for those fucking morons that say humans are invasive, that's not actually the correct usage of that term, okay? That's, that's If you're a dope and you don't know anything... Oh, look at that caterpillar right there. If you're a dope and you don't know anything about ecology, you know, you would, you're just going to assume uh, that invasive means aggressive. Not the case. Invasive means specifically brought by humans... Uh, and then introduced to a new ecosystem where it doesn't have any competitors, any uh, fungus or insects, if it's a plant that keep it in check, etc. So that's why it's invasive is because, you know, species don't exist as islands. They exist as members of ecosystems. It's the whole fucking ecosystem. Again, you got to zoom in. It doesn't just mean it doesn't just mean aggressive. Humans brought themselves places and humans have a choice whether to be, you know, ecological disasters or to mitigate their uh, ecological disastrousness. Invasive species don't have a choice. They're just doing what they've always done. Okay, so it really comes down to an issue of consciousness, fuckface, okay? Don't go muttering stupid shit. All right, I'm sorry, turn up. I'm getting turned up. Let's turn it down. Skip back to the basics. Here we go. 
Oh, there we go. This guy's still flying. Look at this guy. About to stick his ass up in here. I love the stink bugs. Physeria. It's a mustard. A rather beautiful mustard. They can be kind of a clusterfuck to key out the species, so I'm not going to do it because I don't care. But Physeria is the genus there. Six stamens. Bulbous central style. And uh, just fucking bangers, man. Bladder pods, they're called. And there's the fruit. Okay? Which, again, is just an enlarged ovary that is at the center of the flower. All right? I, it's amazing how disconnected we are. So many people don't know that every flower produces a fruit. So, not knocking anybody. Just saying. You gotta do some outreach. This is Nectagenia capitata. Looks like shit right now. Not blooming when it does bloom. Blood red flowers. Incredible plant for a garden. Got a tuberous root. Gets cut back. You know, you could mow this thing. It'll come back. They just keep coming back. There's a, a patch of this in South Texas where they mow. Because lo Texans love to mow. They'll mow anything. All right? They'll mow your fucking grandchildren. All right? So Texans let them mow, they mow it down, it just sprouts, sprouts right back up. You got a storage root down there, a very important plant for the pollinators, and the leaves, of course, are opposite because it's Nectagenaceae, the Bougainvillea family. Here we go. The shit lapidium is it. Look at it, another mustard. See that? Four petals, six stamens. Get up in there. Oh, yeah, let's see the six. Beautiful flowers, beautiful, dainty little flowers. That ovary is red in the center. Uh, you know, if I... this. Seen some others down that had the fruit. I wish I could show, show the fruit to you. But uh, anyway, there you go. What lapidium? Which lapidium is that? Nice, huh? See, when I'm taking herbarium specimens, I get up there. I'm, I turn into a fucking barber. Okay? Because you got to make sure that shit looks good. Because people are going to be looking at it maybe for, you know, the next hundred years. Okay? If, if, I, if Of course, given, the, okay, the big iffy, if humanity doesn't destroy itself, which I think is probably going to happen. I'm kind of a catastrophist. But you got to get those snippers in there. And, uh, you know, I'm pruning it up because it's when you smush it, it's going to kind of look like shit. If you don't, you know, it's not going to press well. You want to make sure it presses well. Okay, these are these are a work of art, okay? See, there's a nice Nick Tag, nice Nick Tagenia. Look at that. Look at all the hairs on that. Glandular as hell, extremely drought tolerant. Look at the beautiful speckling on the leaves, undulate margins, okay, which I assume just helps reduce the amount of surface area that's fully exposed to the sun at any given time. All right. Ah, oh, what a great fucking plant. I got one in my yard that's about six feet wide. All right, but you can, of course, again, you can prune. You can hack everything back. You got that thick tuberous root down there. Come back. Definitely got to be in your yard if you live in a region, okay? New Mexico, uh, Texas, uh, probably even Arizona. Flowers don't smell too good, but uh, who cares? Whatever. Now, that over there, those those little fields of gold, that's what I wanted to show you. That's all mostly Thymophila, all right, which is the marigold tribe of Asteraceae, the sunflower family. But then I see this guy down here, too, all right? Nice little mallow. Nice little... Uh, Sphoracea. Look at the, look how long the peduncle is on that guy. Look at those scabbard leaves as well. Okay, those are those are trichomes. Those are stellate trichomes taken to a new extreme. Look at it. Oh, that's nice. Scale like trichomes. There's that uh, malvaceous cotton family flower. Let's take a look inside. Oh, look, you can see dozens of stamens, and then of course, I don't know, it looks like six or seven styles. Uh, to that uh, gynoecium. Okay, so bisexual flowers. It's the nice little pink uh, malvaceous rose looking bastard. There's another one. Prostrate on the ground. So when the Texans come through to mow, they're not going to get it. All right? Fucking banger. Look at that. They got dumped on here. And these guys are just going off. Ah. And again, that leaf, the leaf shape and the leaf texture are real nice. And then those flowers are a fucking banger too. I wonder what pollinates them. They're building their Airbnbs out there for their new age orgies and what the shit. All right. They're entrepreneurs. All right. You just, you got the money, you buy a little parcel of land, you don't have to live in it, fix it up, put some fake wood paneling on the side of it. You know, make it look kind of rustic, sell it on Airbnb for $200 a night to some marks. Doesn't sound bad, huh? It is kind of bad though, unfortunately. Anyway, I mean, I guess it works for them. To me, it kind of makes me want to puke. Look at all the thymophila here. Look at that. Carpets of yellow. All right, again, marigold family, asteraceae. Some thymophila are perennial. These are annual. So they just live for a season, produce a shit ton of seed, and then they're done. Did I get another uh, another dumping of rain? And here we go. Common plants, relatively common plants, but I got to show them to you because they just smell so good. Aloysia. Aloysia gratissima. Verbenaceae. Order of mints. Lamiales. Look at the calyx right there. Look how goddamn fuzzy it is. Look at that flower, it's uh, that flower shape. I, you know, it's hard to really, uh, because <laughs> I often just overlook them because they're so common. But four lobes to that Corolla, and uh, it's you know, 
actinomorphic, so it's radial, radially symmetrical. And then over here you got Florenzia cernua, Asteraceae, banger of a plant. Look at all those, look at all those flower heads. This smells good too, and it's got that pungent secondary chemistry coming out of the leaf. Look how waxy that leaf looks. Get up there, why don't you get up there? Look at those, look at those styles. They just, just drastically recurve. All right, no, no rays, no ligules. Just discoid flowers and a relatively large bush just getting hit by the pollinators. Look at that. Ah, what a banger. Chihuahua Desert Common Plants. Over here you got a triplex, a triplex canescence. Look at it. Look at it. Look at the damn papery uh, fruits on there. All right. A triplex. You're never going to be wooed by the flowers. It's still and nice. You got that, you know, mint it's it color again. All right. Still a fucking important plant to have around. Look at this guy. This is a weird bastard from the spinach family, Irisine leptoclata, only known from the Big Bend region of Texas and Coahuila in uh, northern Mexico. But look at it. Amaranthaceae, got those tiny little flowers, tiny flowers, voluminous stem. Only one here. There's the only one here. Very nice outcrop of limestone right here. Okay, we got an interesting composite right here. All right, rubbery. Got a rubbery texture to it. Look at the phyleries. Okay, it's done already, so it's gone to seed. As you can see, there's the uh, the Akeens right there. See that? It just looks like kind of like a little uh, little dandelion fruit. See that? The black seed with uh, that pappus on there. Okay, and it's thought of pappus in Astraceae. You know, the, the shit that helps the seed get dispersed, it's called the pappus. It's thought that's just the, the remnants of a calyx to the corolla that was atop that ovary. So see, they're already taken off. Rubbery though, so rubbery, not very common, and uh, somewhat rare. And look at the uh, look at the speckling down there on its stem. Ooh, ooh, that's that's exciting. Rubbery and glabrous. Oh yeah, nictaginaceae, Aleonia. See that? Look at all the stamens. What's white? Is that just old old? Uh, no, those are the, the the white parts are the styles, I guess. So three styles. Opposite leaves. Just a trailing little bastard. Look at that beautiful grass. You know, if I was better at grasses and gave a shit, I could tell you what that is. But unfortunately, I don't. Got a little Nama over here. Oh, look at that. Baraginaceae is the family there. Look at look at the Nama. Look at the calyx. Look at those long calyx lobes. A fused corolla. A bunch of fused petals. There's the anthers in there. And uh, look at all the hairs. Look at how hairy this juicy bastard is. Coming up right on the limestone. Oh, it's one of those... Uh, very common and ubiquitous bivalve fossils that you see in this Cretaceous limestone in West Texas. And see the echinocactus, how they just kind of blend in? Almost wouldn't notice them. Just blending in right with that uh, that limestone. Ooh, mean grusonia, the dog choya. Nice stink bug. What else we got going on up there? Look at this species of uh, Vichelia, formerly acacia. There's the fruit, little legume, there's the seed. It's hilarious. Look at how, how much the leaves have been reduced in adaptation to this dry ass environment. This thing must grow so slowly too. Everything kind of grows in spurts in the desert, you know? It'll probably drop these leaves in a, in a month. It, that's insane. It looks like a goddamn, some sort of damn seaweed. But again, they're just pinnate leaves. Just with, with very little surface area because it's, you know, just transpire all your moisture it's so fucking hot and dry here look at how barren it is <laughs> it's crazy i love the limestone look at this habitat look at those steps like little like little organized beds you just got the kind of cactus poking out of the ground all right half submerged tequilia gregii always a pleasure look at that look at that boraginaceae is the family look at all the frilly shits huh what do you think those hairs are what do you think they're uh, for quote unquote of course, nothing's for anything in evolution. There's just a benefit that comes with it, and that means a mutation either succeeds or uh, it uh, fails. But those hairs, uh, obviously, are probably going to help keep that flower from drying out uh, in this really, really hot, dry... I mean, it's late October. It's still like... Uh, well, it's very pleasant right now, but that sun is intense. It was 110 here this summer. Look at the leaves. Everything's that chalky white color. I got this grass because I'm going to... Uh, a session at Durberry. I'm going to try to get into grass. I'm going to try and teach myself to finally give a shit. It's just hard to get enthused 
So anyway, Tequila Grega, this is a fucking great plant. Super drought tolerant. I wonder how it does in cultivation. Some of this stuff will not do that well in cultivation because it's just so adapted to such harsh, fucked up conditions. But uh, look at those. Look at those bracts on that. Uh, it's same. Oh, yeah, we got a species of dahlia with one flower left. What a cool group. A morphe tribe of the pea family Fabaceae. There's that pea flower. There's those hairy ass calices. Hairy sepals. Hairy sepals.com that are just so indicative of uh, the genus Dahlia. Very pungent because it is in that amorphia tribe. Look at the goddamn leaves. Look at the texture on those. Hairy as hell. You see this, you know it's adapted to an extremely arid place. All right, and then of course there's glands somewhere in there too. I can smell it right now. The foliage is very pungent as it tends to be with most dahlias. This, this inflorescence is even better. Look at that. Holy hell. Look at that. What a fucking banger. I love this genus. Very species rich. A lot of them in Mexico. A lot of them in Texas. A lot of them in the deserts. A lot of them in the Mojave. Banner wings and keel flower morphology because it's the Faboidae subfamily of the P family Fabaceae. Oh, that's nice. Remember that Tagidi tribe right here, Porophyllum scoparium, so it smells very pleasant. Look at the glands. You can see the remnants of those little dots on that, uh, that uh, waxy filary, that waxy involucre. Okay, heads are discoid, so no daisy rays, no ligules. And scoparium, because scoparium means broom-like, and it, it does indeed, it's got kind of like a broom-like, you know, the plant broom, uh, that is. It's got kind of a broom-like uh, habit to it, right? Multi-stemmed, multi-branch coming from a uh, a uh, root down there. Oh, that's nice. Neolordia's flowering. Look at that. Look at the tubercles, okay? Because when, he, when he's not flowering, you're going to need to be able to ID him. See, there's one over there. See, look at the distinct tubercles, central spines, radial spines, and uh, the tubercles. You see the tubercles, those little lumps that the areoles are on top of, and that the spines come out of? And then, of course, a multi-lobed stigma, many stamens and anthers, the orange shits, and a, a multi-seriate perianth. Okay, many peoples, not petals and sepals, because there's a bunch of them and there's not much differentiation. And uh, just coming up on a limestone. How about that? And we got a nice aerocarpus right here. And who doesn't love an aerocarpus? Is he done yet? Oh, it looks like he already flowered. Shit. Yeah, you could tell it's been a while since it rained, though they did get a lot of rain. Look at another beautiful aerocarpus right there. See that? Always such a pleasure seeing those guys. The living rock cactus. You could tell it's been a while since it rained, since all that Selaginella lepidophila, that resurrection fern, has dried up. See all this brown stuff? But when they're lit up, you know, if it rained, you know, the next day, maybe two days later, all this will be green. They just, they unfurl like a palm. And they're just bright, vivid green. So beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Oh, who's that? Landula cactus. Yeah, how about that? You can see the ribs, though. Little fish hook. Fish hook cactus. Glandula cactus. Uncinatus. Uncinatus. What is uncinate? The fuck does that mean? I don't know. Anyway, look at how they stack those rocks. You do that? Deeper in the cut, we got a lot of nice stuff going off. Look at this. We got a, another composite, another member of Asteraceae. All of it an annual okay there's no woody tissue down there so this is this is just comes it might be a per, it might have a perennial root okay but probably not because you see there's the same thing right there annuals tend to vary greatly in size okay just depends on how much moisture they got in the ground and their positioning how much light they're getting see there's another one that's the same species as this okay there's the seeds on it all right seeds can also be diagnostic aka a keens look at those two little bristles coming off each seed uh, the leaves, somewhat juicy, okay, triffid, okay, three leaves, look at the phyleries, one series of phyleries, all right, and then of course just another DYC, just you get your yellow ligules up there, right, there's a massive bastard, some are only getting, I don't know, you know, eight inches tall, this guy's got like a three foot spread right there. Ooh, a nightshade, Quincula lobata, look at that, little, uh, radar disc of a flower purple radar disc why don't you get up in there look at those anthers Ooh, juicy there's nectar in there too you can see it coming off uh, at the base of all those lobes damn that's a juicy bastard little paper lantern fruit when they're done we got any on here oh yeah there you go all right nightshade family uh still an icy there you go Puerto Elionia. all kinds of good shit well nice mazelia White stem, scabbard stem, Lois says the family, there's a fruit. 
That's the, the fruit capsule. You got a capsule fruit. There's the flower. Looks like it's just about that. Oh, it's just opening. It hasn't quite opened yet. Many stamens inside. Yellow flowers. Fucking banger. There's that Nama again. Everything's looking so good. The sun just keeps keeps teasing. It doesn't really want to come out. Look at this. We got a Senna. Oh, yeah. Sesalpinoid subfamily of the pea family, Fibaceae. And a lot of centers have really weird stamen morphology, as you could tell. Look at those banana-shaped. First off, they got porocidal anthers. Some centers have three different sets of anthers. Looks like this has three staminodes and then seven anthers, seven stamens. Oh, see, those are juicy. Those are still going off. This looks like Senna bohenioides, but the leaves are rather large uh, compared to uh, kind of a weird leaf shape, huh? These bifid leaves. And then there's those fruits. But I'm going to have to collect some of these. You know, I'm probably going to collect this whole piece of this fucking plant right there. Centers are fucking great. Again, P family for basically, look, you get, you said Sydney, Tenuifolia back there, Aloysia. Now we're moving on to the volcanic shit. So we should get a little bit of a change up in what we see growing. Getting a little late, but there's still some stuff going off. Look at that fucking Sydney. That, sh that should be in every goddamn garden in the region. You could see what he's doing in there. He's getting the pollen out of there. There's no nectar in these flowers. He's vibrating to get those uh those anthers to just let the juice out see that because senna's got the porocidal anthers again and what's this what's this guy doing over here what's he munching who's this guy what 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 butterfly is that what butterfly is he gonna be i don't know i'm asking questions then we got a really weird member of nictaginaceae here that i can't figure out what the fuck it is is it an annual ocallus? is it some sort of, it's not a marab Look at how look at how filamentous those stems are. Tiny, tiny flowers. Look at that. I can't figure out what the shit this is. I saw it the other day. All right, opposite leaves, of course. Uh, and uh, there's the underside of that uh, those leaves. Thought it was a goddamn boar. I can't figure it out. I'm gonna have to key this out. I'm gonna have to collect this, take it to the bear, and figure out what the fuck it is. Look at these caterpillars. There's so many of them. Look, they're the same color as the flowers. How about that? Just blended right in. God damn it, I'm pressing this plant. Apparently one of the things I pressed had the little mites in it. All right, we'll see how you guys do in a freezer. How's that? Volcanic muds. Are they volcanic muds? That's certainly volcanic up there. But is this soil weather from the same formation? Pectus paposa. All right, another tagidioid camp. All right, there's the seeds. And uh, there's the, uh, it's an annual, also an annual. Smells rather fragrant, very pleasant. We got a species of Plantago, which uh, I believe are all wind pollinated. Is that true? Are they all wind pollinated? There's the flowers. Not a very charismatic genus. A lot of them are weedy. This one's a desert native. As you can tell from the blue color and the intense hair, the intense indumentum of trichomes and a foliage. Look at that little Metzelia. Is that Oligosperma? I don't know, it's scabbard as hell. Look at those nice orange flowers. Super ass scabbard stems, right? Like sandpaper. Flowers aren't quite open yet. It's a little, it's not as warm as it uh, normally is. Now we're walking through the wash and see how they put it right here? They put this right here for you so you can enjoy it, huh? You got your Nama, your Plantago, your Titostromia, which is in the family Isoaceae. Not very charismatic. Look at those tiny flowers in there and the intense scales. Uh, and of course, the betalane pigment since it is caryophyte lilies. But we'll give an honorable mention. Tons of that. Uh, Thymophila too, that marigold. Okay, they put that there for you. you. Like that? You like it when they put stuff there for you? you? Like it when it's nice? The sun's coming out. There we go. All right, native poinsettia. Okay, and poinsettias are just euphorbias. There's those ovaries, those little green melon-looking things. Where's a, a intact cyathium? There you go. Oh yeah, see those uh, three three styles, three red styles on top of that developing ovary. Can't tell if this is a dioecious plant or monoecious. Does it have, is it a, the whole plant's unisexual or the plant's got both sexes of flowers on it? But uh, I don't see. But it does bleed the sap, and there's those bracts. See at the base of that uh, developing ovary that's receptive to pollen right now. Those bracts are the nectaries that attract uh, the pollinators. Yeah, there you go. See the yellow pollen? There's a there's a male flower. Highly reduced flowers, and then of course. Kind of that mint green color again, okay? Very waxy foliage, glabrous, and uh, very narrow, reducing the surface area, because we are in a fucking desert. This old volcano, how old? Miocene? 20 million years, you think? Beautiful 
annulocallus, annulocallus, however you want to pronounce that, the ring stems, because some of them got, uh, you know, a little ring around the stem, which is like a little viscid, I don't know if this one has it. Anyway, there's those flowers, all right, Nictaginaceae is the family there. Look at those pronounced stamens, exerted out of that corolla. Flowers about, I don't know, what do you think, a centimeter about? There's those leaves. Look at that. Impressive leaf, that little bee. What was it, a bee or a fly? I think it was a fly. Anyway, yeah, see, he's right He's right over there. Look at that, perennial root. Look, thick, stocky taproot down there. Annual colis are fucking cool. There's a bunch of cool ones. There's another one over there. See that? All right, nothing should be growing here. It is so barren, so dry. What is this? Oh, this is a little one just getting going. Oh, yeah, look at that. Coriaceous leathery leaf. Ooh, how about that? Nama's going off. Bunch of goddamn Nama verbicina. It's Senna. So lit up. Whole shit tons of butterflies. Nice stuff. Do you like nice stuff? Look at it. Everything's going off. Goddamn, Ocotillo's finally dropping its leaves, though. It's getting a little dry. A little dry. All the composites are still going off, though. How about that? Look at this, say triplex. All right, most distinct thing about this. All right, again, not a banger genus. I think so, but, you know, the flowers are not showy. Most distinct thing about this are those fruits, okay? A triplex acanthocarpa. Very distinct shape to those fruits. Basically done, again, chalky mint green color. And uh, loves the uh, salty soil. Another dog soya. Miserable bastard. I mean, I, I appreciate it. It's got a context, but holy fuck. You know, they really got barbed spines and they stick in you. Look at this. All this was just lit up. All this lit up. Just a mishmash of rocks. West Texas has a clusterfuck of geology, which makes it all the more interesting. Okay? Newer volcanics next to younger sediments. Titostromia is goddamn everywhere. I got the pectus. A lot of fossil uh, activity, too, depending on where you are. But it's just so barren most of the time. I wonder what the annual uh, rainfall is for this specific area. Not a lot going off, except for this little uh, dainty bastard. Satherotopsis. Look at the individual florets on that guy. And look at the leaf texture, especially. Look at this. Dainty little cops. I assume that's an annual. I can't really tell. Perennial root on there or what? The leaves are somewhat juicy. And then there's the uh, there's the fruits. Look at that. Look at look at them. how many pappus uh, scales you got on there. That's nice. God damn. Look at that. Look at that fight. It's sticky as hell too. Very sticky, sticky fucking plant. Not much diversity in these badlands, but there is this cute little Boodaloo. Look at that! Look at that little grass, right? Hard for me to give a shit about grass most times, but that's a, that's a pretty interesting one. The eyelash grass, see that? That it, that the whole inflorescence just looks like a little eyelash.